Good morning and happy Monday to you. We certainly hope that you had a great weekend. And now we are happy to share some time together as we kick off another week here on Virginia This Morning. Andrea Swipe Murdoch joins me today. I'm Amy Lacey. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning and good morning to all of you out there. It's another show featuring the A-Team. Yeah. Yeah, that's Andrea's right, Amy. That's right. I'm always happy to be here with you, Amy, and it's going to be a great week. I can feel it. Did you have a good weekend? I did. I had a great weekend. I, I mentioned to you um, off air that my dad opened a grocery store down in Surrey so County, which it. is considered a food desert. Actually, they haven't had a grocery store since 1999, and so it has officially opened, and that was a, a boisterous weekend of celebration. Well, so my family is in town from Pennsylvania, so I'll probably yes. share some photos of them at the TV station on social media. So look for that but we just had a great time going around and about and just exploring yeah. a little bit doing some things around the house and then my mom daughter and I volunteered last night at the our laughter in the rain event yes which is a celebration for people with cancer and it's just always so uplifting and such an amazing time to, to just see how far we've come with cancer and it was really really a special night absolutely I'm so glad to hear that laughter in the rain has been around for a long time yes, it it's such been. a great cause well we both had very uplifting lifting weekends. That's right. Amazing. That's why it's going to be a great week because we're coming in on a high. Yes, we are. It is there a magnificent go. Monday. Yes. Let's get started now with Jeff, Jennifer Pang and Caitlin Singleton. They are the owners of With Love, Kat and Thea, and they specialize in Asian inspired baked goods and sandwiches. Today they're going to put together their new menu item they call Fall in Love. A maple rosemary mini tart with a pomegranate apple cranberry curd. Yum, yum, yum. We cannot wait to taste this signature creation coming up in the show. Ooh la la. Well, we can all use some motivation, especially on a Monday as we start a new week. Our great friend Eric Rittmeyer is back in our studio, and he's a former United States Marine author and mental toughness coach. Today he wants to talk about kicking the approval addiction. This interesting conversation coming up in less than 10 minutes. Conexus is a Richmond-based nonprofit that aims to take poor vision out of the equation as it relates to a child's success in the classroom. Tim Gresham is the CEO, and we will talk with him about Conexus comprehensive programs that's coming up later on today's live show. Well, now let's get a check of the local Monday forecast with the one and only Tom Patton. Wow, good to see you, A-Team. Nice to see you. Hey, Tom. So B-Team <laughs> is off today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, I've got to back up to the beginning here because Andreas, yeah. A grocery store for the first time since when in Surrey County? 1999. It's called the Surrey Marketplace. And yeah, the first time that you could get produce, meats That's in amazing. the county. That's what? wonderful. What a great addition to that yeah. community. Oh, yes. Folks were so excited to, to finally have it open. It's been a labor of love. Now, Surrey is a big old county. Don't get me wrong. Uh, like where in Surrey? In Surrey? In Denver? It, where, where are yeah, we talking? Yeah, it's right in the town of Surrey, right okay. down the street from um, like the, the courthouse buildings and a number of other places that are kind of classic Surrey. It's right Exciting. at the stoplight in Surrey. The stoplight. <laughs> the stoplight stop in Surrey. All right. I'm sorry. I want to keep asking questions. Like what, kind of, what kind of stuff? I mean, like, is, Everything. is it like a... Full wow. service grocery store that includes meats, produce, non-perishables, household items, and eventually we'll have hot food and maybe even some catering. Nice. Goodness gracious, that's really exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll right. send in some pictures so we can talk yeah. all about it. Well, congratulations. That sounds Thank really you. nice. And ladies, Thank nice you. to see you. Happy Monday. It's getting a little breezy out here. We have a lot of clouds now in place, and we're tracking the system down on the Carolina coastline. Been looking at that to develop here probably for about a week, and finally it did and it'll affect us tonight. A little breezy with some rain. Let's show you right now, 66 degrees, cloudy skies, north northeast winds at 10, but I got a feeling they're gusting a bit higher at this point. 60s in the metro, 70s near the coast, 50s back toward the valley, and here we go, potential tropical cyclone 8 could become Helene, but I'll tell you what, I was reading the discussion from the Hurricane Center, and they said chances may have been decreasing so we'll see, sometimes that'll change. Neither or either way, 
there will be some tropical storm like conditions from Hatteras down through central South Carolina. So there you go. That includes Myrtle Beach, Fayetteville and some of those areas of North Carolina. Some minor coast uh, coastal flooding possible along the Chesapeake Bay. That's through tonight and early tomorrow. This is that system. It's going to make its way on shore probably this afternoon or evening and weaken quickly. So it may have time to develop into a tropical storm. Either way, it's going to weaken on shore and kind of linger for several days down there and kind of keep us unsettled through a, a portion of the work week. Now by this afternoon, thick clouds, a bit breezy as I mentioned. A couple showers possible, but it's not till probably tonight we'll start to see more significant rain from this right into your commuter hours of tomorrow and during the day some waves of showers, maybe even a little thunder coming in on and off right through tomorrow evening and then Wednesday still unsettled, not as rainy, nor do we expect as much rain by Wednesday and Thursday, but enough to be unsettled with some scattered showers still kind of hanging from the system even into Thursday. So potentially some significant rain of maybe between one and as many as three inches possible in many areas of the Commonwealth. Virginia this morning will continue right after this. Happy Monday to you on this September 16th. It's right after 9 o'clock, and that means you tuned in at the right time for the area's only live local talk and entertainment show, Virginia This Morning. I'm Amy Lacey with Andrea White Murdaugh this morning. Good morning, Andrea. So great to Good see you. Good morning. It is such a great morning already, and I think we need a special theme song when you and I are on air together. we got to figure it's out what that's going to be. That TV show The A-Team, they had a theme song from the 80s. We need to Ooh. get it, and we'll maybe play it. There you go. Or we could sing a little something, we can, make yeah, something up. Tune. We can, you know, <laughs> do a little bit of. Uh, there you go. You <laughs> seem musical to me. I can, I can belt out a tune. Okay. All right. It's, I'm not going to say that it's good or that it sounds okay, but I can belt out it. You let us be the judge of that. I think we, we've got some behind the scenes work we need to do. There's, there's possibly a, a theme song in our okay. future. We're gonna that's right. All right. Well, we've got a great show lined up for you today. So let's jump in with a recap of a few highlights. Jennifer Pang and Caitlin Singleton are in the Virginia This Morning Kitchen. They are going to make their fall in love creation, which is a maple rosemary mini tart with pomegranate apple cranberry curd. Yum, 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 yum. And we are looking forward to seeing how it all comes together. I'm getting my fork ready. I know you are too, Andrea. Oh, I keep my fork ready. <laughs> All right. He's a former United States Marine and mental toughness expert who we are happy to have back in the studio to be part of our Motivational Monday series. Eric Rittmeyer is going to talk about kicking the approval addiction. Our conversation is still to come on our live show. Connexus is a great resource here in our community. They realize children do better in school when they can see properly. We'll talk with Tim Gresham about the programs they offer coming up. And you can join us to help raise money for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Richmond. This year's Red Shoe Rendezvous Gala is set for tonight at the Dominion Club in Glen Allen. The theme this year is 60s Palm Springs, which just sounds way too fun. Oh, my goodness. To purchase tickets, just scan the QR code right there on your screen. Cannot wait for that. I feel like we've been talking about it for a while. Quite the a day is finally here, yep. and we cannot wait. Best wishes tonight. Well, before we head to break, we want to share the details on an upcoming event you can attend for a great cause. This segment is sponsored by VCU Massey Comprehensive Cancer Center and the Massey Alliance Young Professionals Board. VCU Massey Comprehensive Cancer Center and the Massey Alliance Young Professionals Board present Massey on the River. Today, co-chairs Jordan Hunter and Mark Lynch join us to share more about the event. Thank you for being here today on Virginia This Morning. Thanks for having us. Really excited to be here. Mark, I have to ask, what is the Massey Alliance? The Massey Alliance is a young professionals board that traditionally has a connection to cancer that is there to support the Massey Comprehensive Cancer Center from a fundraising and bigger advocacy standpoint throughout the community. Jordan, Massey on the River is the premier event. What can folks expect when they go out this year? Absolutely. So the Massey Alliance is hosting their 15th year of Massey on the River this year at the Science Museum of Virginia, September 20th uh, from 6 to 10 p.m. 
and it's a night of fun. It's a party with a purpose. We're raising money to uh, provide critical research for the VCU Massey Comprehensive Cancer Center. So just a fun night out, local food, local drink, local live music. What a great time, and it is for that purpose. Mark, you mentioned uh, Comprehensive Cancer Center. I know that Massey has become so much more globally renowned, and much of it has to do with that comprehensive word. What does that mean to the community and for all the patients served? That comprehensive status has been a huge win for Massey. Um, that puts us in the top 4% in the country and one of the only two cancer centers in the state of Virginia with that status. And really what that does is open up so many more doors for us to have better research facilities, recruit more top talent in the industry, and really the biggest part is to create a bigger impact for the community from a prevention and treatment standpoint. So raising money is critical for that research, for everything that's going on at Massey. Jordan, what else can expect from Massey on the river in addition to the music and the food and the drink? Sure, absolutely. So we'll have a robust auction that people can participate in. Uh, that'll be so fun. And then we have local live music from Three Sheets of the Wind. They are a Yacht Rock tribute band. If you haven't seen them, they are a blast to see. Uh, we also have craft beer, wine, delicious food, non-alcoholic beverages, all from local vendors. Uh, and yeah, just come out and party with a purpose with us. Where can folks get tickets if they're interested in coming? Sure, so you can go online at MasseyOnTheRiver.org. You can follow along with us on Instagram and Facebook. We'll be posting every day leading up to the event at Massey Alliance. Uh, and if you can't event, if you can't attend, um, you can also get a virtual ticket at MasseyOnTheRiver.org. Fantastic. And you know, Mark, you mentioned that members of the board, they all have that cancer connection. And this is why you serve on this board and you're raising the funds. Everyone out there has that cancer connection too. I find it hard to believe that anyone hasn't been impacted by cancer in some way. Why should folks who are listening come on out and support the board and Massey Comprehensive Cancer Center? There is gonna be that impact, whether it's already happened in most people's lives or the way forward, the better that we can research, the better we can create preventative medicine as well as treat cancer in the future, that is gonna be a huge part of everybody's lives moving forward. It's getting better as the days go on, as the research goes on, everything's getting better from a, a treatment standpoint, but we wanna get ahead of it. We, we wanna impact the best way possible and raising money for this cause is only gonna help that continue forward. Miracles are happening at Massey every day and every folks can all be a part of that when they come to your event. Thank you so much for coming to Virginia this morning. We love being able to spread the word about such a fun, party with purpose, as you said. Join the VC Massey Alliance Young Professionals Board for Massey on the River 2024. This is all happening Friday, September 20th at the Science Museum of Virginia, located at 2500 West Broad Street in Richmond. For ticket information and more, give them a call at 804-366-8041 or visit the website MasseyOnTheRiver.org. Connect with them on social media as well. Virginia This Morning returns in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Welcome back. After enjoying a great weekend, sometimes you need to do a hard reset as you begin another week. Our great friend of the show, mental toughness expert and former United States Marine, Eric Rittmeyer, is here with today's Motivational Monday topic, kicking the approval addiction. Hi, Eric, thanks for coming in. I love being in studio. Oh my goodness, you know, we love having you. I love this stuff, I, I miss this. I don't like Zoom anymore, <laughs> I want in person, it's all we, I want. We love in person too because the energy just really, yes. really flows. Yes. Absolutely. So talk to us about approval addiction. What is it, how do you know if you are suffering from this? Approval addiction is brutal, and almost everyone suffers from it, unfortunately. This is part of our DNA. It's ingrained in us hundreds of thousands of years ago. We relied on our tribes for the approval to protect us, to feed us. Fast forward, we're born as kids. We make our parents happy, we get what we want. We go to school, we make the teachers happy, we get what we want. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, we get out into the real world and somebody doesn't agree with us or they say something mean to us about our thoughts and it's a pain like we've never felt before. We shut down, we don't wanna try new things. Approval addiction cripples people from doing things they probably should be doing. So we're talking about 
a level of people pleasing that we all have and we're all thinking about, even when we may not want to admit it, why is this something that is so hard to overcome? It's difficult because it used to be, Andres, like we only relied on the people in our circle that we wanted approval from, right? So it was like our immediate family, our closest friends, whatever. Now with social media, it's like we need the approval of millions of people. And the minute we get one negative comment or somebody says something derogatory, we process that. We don't, we don't hear the 99% of people that are like, oh, this is great or this is wonderful. So we rely so much on that approval. It becomes debilitating. And the older we get, the more attached we are to it, to the point where it prevents us from trying new things, from reaching out to people, from experiencing, from starting a business, from asking someone out on a date. It's totally debilitating. We, Andreas and I have talked about this. We, are, we do very well with lists mm -hmm. because it's great that you can write it down, you can cross something off. What can we put on that list that we should be trying to get over this approval addiction? So these are two of the biggest words. Don't ask me how to spell them. It's called systematic desensitization. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Or I have no idea. We systematically desensitize our brains to things that we fear. So it works really well with putting ourselves in situations where we feel uncomfortable, maybe emotionally, sometimes physically uncomfortable. It's like Marine Corps training. You just continue to put yourself in these situations. So when you have this list of things that you're fearful of for whatever reason, figure out a way to put yourself in those situations gradually. This is called graduated exposure therapy in the world of psychology, you gradually expose yourself to these things to the point where you no longer fear it and you start to not worry what other people think. And I'm careful about that because I'm not a fan of this, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I don't subscribe to that. I think you should listen to what people say, but you cannot automatically internalize everything everyone says. Process it logically and then, okay, do they have a point? Are there multiple people saying this or two people saying this? It's all about being very objective. Yeah, really thinking about what you said is, is this just one person? perspective or is this a feedback loop that I need to make sure I'm paying attention to that's very important but to your point making sure that you're not over zealous in making change when you're hearing something is important but putting yourself out there I sometimes will say well okay so what's the worst that could happen what's the absolute worst case scenario it may not be as bad as it feels you know someone having a negative comment may not be as bad if I just get out there and try to start receiving that feedback more often. And I think we'll all agree on this. I tell this to my kids all the time. 99% of the time, the things that we fear the most don't end up being that bad, right? It's like we dread these things. We push stuff off. I'll deal with that tomorrow. I'll deal with that next week. Six months later, we go to do it. It's been on our mind the whole time. We do it and it's like, I wish I had done this a long time ago. It just wasn't that big of a deal. So we can all just process that and get in the habit of addressing these things. And again, being objective. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? I know what, I, what my strengths are. I know what my weaknesses are. Not saying I should overemphasize the strengths. Not saying I should underemphasize the weaknesses. But being very objective and asking the people closest to us, get their opinions. Sometimes it's not fun to do. Like, what do you think about me? And they're like, well, I'll tell you what I think about you. <laughs> just keep the alcohol off the table, right? I'll tell you what I think about you. But it's all these little things we can do. But it all starts starts with just understanding not everyone's going to accept our thoughts. It's okay to have an opposing point of view and it's okay if someone doesn't like what we're doing because there might be lots of people that what we're doing makes a difference in their life. It's really all about staying true to yourself and then being free to or getting comfortable with being a little uncomfortable to adjust slightly. That's a very important thing to do. We are a very comfortable society, yeah. right? It's like we're cold, we put clothes on. We're hungry, we eat. <laughs> yep. We're tired, we sleep. It's like at some point you have to activate these internal things inside of us that give us the ability to survive. This is part of our evolutionary advantage is the ability to be in these stressful situations. We have these mechanisms internally. If we constantly soar through life, racing through life to arrive at death as safely as we possibly can, not trying to win anything, just trying not to lose, these are things that prevent people from fully spreading in their wings to do the things that they really want to do, to build deeper relationships, to be kind to each other. Kuna Matata. So I say, no worries, yeah. right? Kuna Matata. Some Lion King. We can sing together. Kuna Matata. Is right. I got you. I told you I, I told you I can carry a tune, but I'm not going to say it. It means no worries. I thought you were going to get it. Eric. I, I did. did. You know what? I, I was did. waiting for that. I was waiting for that. Thank you so much for coming in and being with us. Always a pleasure. You always give me so much to think about. Yeah, today's the day we're going to spread our wings and we're going to fly. We're going to make it happen. Thank we you hope guys that for you have me. a peaceful and productive week. You're the best. Thanks for Thank making you. ours happen today. Thank you. For more information, just visit our show website by early this afternoon at virginiathismorning.com. In the meantime, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Hi everyone, welcome back to Virginia This Morning. Connexus aims to remove poor vision as barriers to a child's success, especially in the classroom. Tim Gresham, president and CEO of Connexus, joins us to share more about the services they offer. Thank you so much for coming in today. My pleasure, it's good to be here. Tell us about some of these programs because it really can mean the difference between a great year for a student and one where they just feel like they're falling behind over and over. Yes, you can imagine sitting in the classroom unable to see your workbook or the, or the board and you're just not gonna be successful in the, in the classroom. So our mission is to um, go out and identify those children um, that need help and then connect them with care either through us or through local eye doctors. I've been really lucky because I've had an opportunity to actually go to some of your screening events out of mm -hmm. school and witness it. And it's it, you can take these services to kids right where they are in their schools. Yes, and we actually go into the classrooms and provide the screens. We use a really high tech digital vision screening. It doesn't require any uh, input from the student. So even um, a student that has autism or doesn't understand, you know, has some language issues, um, we can perfectly screen them with these with this equipment. What are some of the stories that you've seen happening in the schools where a child maybe wasn't able to see, maybe their grades weren't quite where they could be, and then they got glasses and voila. Right, lives, lives are changed. Yeah. Um, um, we know that in a traditional classroom, about 80% of what a child learns is through vision. So if they're sitting in the classroom not seeing well, they're not gonna perform well. And uh, particularly with younger children, like we screen in kindergarten, uh, second and third grade, seventh grade, and tenth grade, but like those kindergartners that might not be seeing well, they don't really have a frame of reference, so they don't even know that they're not seeing well. They're just not getting it. I remember back when I was in elementary school, it was a teacher who brought it to my attention and my parents' attention that I wasn't, I was in the back of the classroom and then one day I wasn't able to see and I, and I got my glasses. So I could imagine that that's, that's pretty common that these are people who are with your kids each and every day in right. that kind of a setting. So this is where you want to be able to really build those connections. Right, and it's really cool that we're able to be like in the schools where the kids are, you know, uh, reaching them where they are when they're there. Um, and then um, for some areas and some of the poverty um, areas that we serve, we come back with a mobile vision clinic and provide eye exams and glasses. And then we get the joy of really putting the glasses on the face of a child um, at school that may not have never seen clearly in their entire life. And it just, you, their reactions are different, but they're always just amazing. You know, it never gets old. Um, so you do, you're based here in Richmond, but where do you serve folks out there who are watching? And, you know, where our communities are all over the place. Where are you? We're actually in 52 school divisions across Virginia. And so in, in the Richmond area, we, we provide screenings in Richmond, Henrico, Chesterfield, um, uh, Hopewell, Petersburg, Colonial Heights. You know, we're really in, in all the area providing screenings uh, in, in the Richmond area. If somebody at home wants to get involved with your program, support it in some way, how can they get involved? Uh, the easiest way is to go to our website, connectsvision.org, and there's a lot of information there. You can learn a lot more about us. You can see videos of those kids getting glasses, which is really, really cool. Um, you can donate to Connexus. That helps us because we're limited by the funds that we raise. As far as the optometrists, the ophthalmologists, are they volunteering their time to support your They're program? They're not. Um, we actually pay them a daily rate, and we have a shortage right now of, of doctors, uh, we're, so we're looking for doctors. And uh, a lot of our doctors only work with us one day a week. They might work somewhere else two or three days a week. So we're pretty flexible as far as scheduling them in to serve the schools. But we need, you know, on average, two or three doctors every day serving in the, in the school divisions that we serve. Since the schools went back recently, is now a busy time of year for Connexus that you're starting to schedule those visits? It is, yeah. We've already screened um, over 10,000 children this year already, wow. this school year. And uh, our clinics have already started and we've provided eye exams to more than uh, 400 students already um, in just a couple of weeks. So we, this is a real, really a busy time for us. Summer is time for us to kind of gear up and get everything ready and then some schools start earlier and we're in those schools first and um, things don't really slow down until, you know, April or May at this point. 
Wow, well, Tim, thank you so much for coming in. Just such an invaluable resource you are to those kids and their families and those classrooms because it just, it makes it a, uh, it, it builds that foundation that kids can just grow on each and every day of their Yeah, it gives year. them an opportunity to be successful and that's what we're trying to do. It raises confidence, yes, which is wonderful. Yes, it does. It thank does. you so much. Thank you, Amy, appreciate it. For more information on Conexus, just visit our show website by early this afternoon. You can check out Virginia This Morning. Com. Andres, I'll send it over to you. According to the Mayo Clinic.org website, Chiari malformation is a condition which the brain tissue extends into the spinal canal. It's a serious neurological disorder that affects an estimated 300,000 people in the United States. Later this month, there's a special walk that aims to bring awareness. Joining us this morning is Rick Gibbs, and he is here along with Kimberly Steinruck, who has Chiari. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you all. I will admit that I don't often hear about Chiari. And so this awareness in September being Awareness Month for this is so important. Tell us a bit about the malformation. Absolutely. So uh, Chiari malformation is a neurological disorder. Um, you're born with it. It's genetic. So um, there's it, it's not, nothing that, it, that um, happens that you end up getting it. Um, and so what happens is, is you have the cerebellum part of your brain. While your brain stem produces your spinal fluid, the cerebellum part of your brain actually pumps that fluid down into your spine, which nourishes your spine and helps the rest of your body continue to, to move and function the way that it's supposed to. Um, with Chiari, the cerebellum swells. It's, it's the swelling action, and it has nowhere else to go because your skull is, is hard. You know, there, there's no room, so it has nowhere else to go. So the only opening is for it to start protruding down into your brain stem. Um, when I was diagnosed about 20 years ago, I um, actually had my surgery. This is the 20 year anniversary of my surgery. Um, it literally was about, um, and lodged about an inch and a half down my brain stem. So um, although I was already short enough at only 4'11", um, my choices were paralysis, death, or have the surgery. And um, when they had the surgery, they basically um, opened up the, the hole in the skull a little bit, allowing more room, and they took an inch and a half of vertebrae off. So that again allows it to, you know, to, to swell and has some room to, you know, so that it's not so much pressure on the rest of my brain and on my spine and the rest of my body. And this is so important for people to understand. I know that it is not always quickly diagnosed yeah. from a doctor because it is a, a more, um, not talked about as much. They may not know as much about it. Right, um, and the thing of it is, is that although there are some serious symptoms that uh, you know a lot that are, are triggers, um, you know, migraine headaches, um, balance, um, things like that, dizziness, um, they really don't know that you have it unless there's an MRI done. Um, and it, it takes so much time to, you know, it mirrors a lot of the symptoms, mirrors some of the smaller or less serious issues that people, everyday people have, but it's the severity, it's the frequency, um, it, you know, it takes us longer to heal um, with, with certain things, even the common cold or whiplash, things like that. Um, we have to avoid things like roller coasters, um, anything that's going to jerk and affect the neck. Um, and you just, you know, you learn to do things, you know, we go through the physical therapy, we, you know, after the surgery and things like that. And the surgery is actually one of the b better things to, to, to help. It, it, it's right, it actually helps reduce um, and the, reduce the frequency and the severity, but the, the symptoms never go away. You, you never have it. I mean, you, there's not a cure for it, so yeah. it's not something you can be in remission over or that you can eventually get over. So the, the walk here, which is held, this is the 17th annual, and Rick, I'm coming to you. You are connected to this and be, have become the chair because your nephew. <laughs> Actually, my godson. Godson, excuse me. Yes, uh, Brandon Witt is my godson, and he is 13 now. He was diagnosed when he was four. He had a lot of challenges when he came home. He was on a feeding tube. He had to go to the children's clinic here in Richmond for two and a half years to learn how to eat. And at a happenstance between an MRI and a CT scan, they diagnosed him when he was four. And then he had to decompression surgery. And long story short, he went from 15 doctors to about seven. So his quality of life is drastically improved, but you could say for me, he's kind of the straw that stirs the drinks. He's the person sure. that motivates us to want to have this sure. walk. So this is our ninth annual walk here in Richmond. So it's an exciting time. 
Well, and it happens not only in Richmond, but in 260 cities, 48 states, right. 105,000 people right. who are involved with this and has raised over $6.4 million. So the work that you're doing is so important, and it happens over a couple different weekends than this year happening September 28th. 28th here in Richmond, 21st or the 28th, depending on where you are. It's an exciting time. I think the biggest thing for me is wanting to educate, advocate, and find a cure. Absolutely, and it's free to participate in. Free to participate Registration in. is still open. So registration is open. Uh, we'll register that morning up until nine o'clock. We'll walk at 10 o'clock. You can walk a mile, you can walk two miles, but it'll be an exciting time. It'll be a fun time. We'll have, not that you'll be out there to visit us uh, along with some other folks and we'll have some raffles and some giveaways. It'll be a good day. Yeah. It is going to be a fantastic day. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for sharing your Thank story you. and also, bringing awareness. We also have some great sponsors that have, you know, come out and helped us out and things like that too, including um, like companies like Core Mortgage, um, Mary Kay with Hannah a Sproul. So it's going to be an exciting time. We're going to have some vendors. So yeah, we invite everyone to come out. An exciting time indeed. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Richmond is getting ready for the Conquer Kiari Walk Across America event coming up Saturday, September 28th. Registration starts at 9 a.m. Walk begins at 10 a.m. The location, West Chester Common Shopping Center. That's 15786 WC Main Street in Midlothian, Virginia. VirginiaThisMorning.com is where you can find a link with all the details later today. Amy, sending it your way. Okay, we all know no need to travel to see New York City to see a Broadway show. We hope you will join us tomorrow as we help Broadway and Richmond celebrate their 2024 2025 season. You do not want to miss it. This segment is sponsored by Welcome Home Financial Partners. When do you want to retire? You've worked for decades, and in theory, you should be just a few years out. And yet, perhaps you find yourself waiting for the perfect time. Ralph and Tim Short are the father-son team at Welcome Home Financial Partners, a Richmond area firm that focuses on preparing for a successful retirement. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Tim, what exactly is this thought that people wait for the stars to align? Why do we need to be doing it sooner rather than later? Well, there's a lot of people that you, the biggest thing, the biggest star that they're looking for is that market, right? So they're looking for that market to be at all time high and it's like, okay, now it's time to retire. But you've got to focus in on yourself because there's going to be different variables in retirement. Life's going to throw you curveballs. So you've got to make sure that you're fully ready to retire and well prepared. And that's when the stars will align. Ralph, what is the appropriate time to start? Today. Yeah. Why not? Or maybe it, yesterday. Or yesterday. <laughs> it all depends. I mean, today I would say no matter what your age, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 50s, 60s, it's the point in time where you have to figure out what you want to do in retirement, how you're going to retire. You're not going to be able to retire at age 20, but you've got to start preparing for that. That means if you have a 401k availability at work where they're matching, you need to start that. Why, why shouldn't you? Would you give up free money? Okay, and you're in your 60s. Now is the perfect time that you really have to set yourself up for a successful retirement because you have to know what your expenses are going to be. You have to know what you want to do in retirement, and all those things are going to cost you. Because, to my point of view, I don't think anybody's going to let you have that perfect retirement by giving you everything that you want. You have earned it, the right to retire, but you also have the right to use your money the way you want to. Would you agree, Tim? Yeah, and I agree. There's different stages of life, but you gotta start preparing when you're young, right? It's cheaper when you're younger than if you just start at age 60 and you wanna retire at 62, right? So we always talk about the retirement red zone where we're within five years of retirement. That's the best time to make sure you've got your ducks in a row. What kind of tweaks can you make? Those kinds of things. And what is that checklist that folks can use as a guide as they are getting this process started and then continuing it over the years? 
Well, the biggest thing is market risk, yeah. right? We see a lot of people when they come see us, if they want to retire tomorrow or the end of the year or within five years, is they got entirely too much risk because the way that the market is, you know, it can giveth and it can taketh away too. So you want to make sure that you're not, you know, one foot out of the door of your employer and the next thing you know, the market takes, you know, 30, maybe even 50% of your money because then what are you going to do? Are you still going to be, be able to retire the way that you want? But you also have to understand your numbers because those are things that you have to do in life whether you're retired or not. Yeah. It's called paying your bills, insurance costs, things of that nature. You have to know what that is. You're going to have to know what your income's going to be in retirement, whether it's just Social Security or your security and pensions, or whether or not you need some money from your 401ks. Those are all things that you need to know. You need to also understand what is it that you want to do. Do you want to give some money to your grandkids so they can go to college? Those things are going to cost you money. You need to have a budget so you understand where all that's coming from. And this is such important information, and I understand too that because you are the experts in the community, you have an offer for our community members that you really want to help them get this process started. Yeah, so the first five callers who have saved $250,000 more for retirement watching today's show, pick up the phone, give us a call. We'd love the opportunity to bring you into the office and we'll create their very own retirement roadmap. And the best part is, Amy, we do it on a complimentary basis. This is invaluable information. We want to pop that up on the screen one more time for you. For you at home, if you want to stop putting off your retirement or waiting for the stars to align, Welcome Home Financial Partners has a great offer for you. For the first five callers with a portfolio of $250,000 or greater, they're offering a complimentary retirement plan just for you. This will allow Ralph and Tim to sit down with you personally and provide you with a roadmap, analyzing where you are right now and discuss your best steps to really get ready for successful retirement. Here's that number one more time, 804-729-0112. 804-729-0112. And Virginia This Morning returns right after this. Welcome back to Virginia This Morning. It's time to enjoy our kitchen area with Thea Pang. Jennifer Pang, who goes by Thea, also Caitlin Singleton. These entrepreneurs are making a name for themselves on the Richmond food scene. That's right, and they are here to make their new signature fall in love creation. And we've been waiting all morning for this and so many other things that we see on this beautiful table. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you, we're glad to be back. Andrea yes. said it just a few moments ago, but those are so beautiful that they don't almost don't even look like they're real. They are just gorgeous, the, the artistry that is happening there. So I look forward to seeing what you do to make that happen. I look forward to seeing what you do to make that happen also. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh -oh. You're put your piping skills to the challenge. Okay. That okay. sounds like a challenge. <laughs> we can do it. Okay, so before we get piping, it's, there's probably a few other steps that we have to start with. Yeah, so uh, step-wise, we're actually going to talk about some of the other things we brought and then lead into Thea okay. doing a quick demo on how to make some really tasty flavored whipped cream to add on top of items that you have at home. Nice. So we remember that Andreas is Team T. That's right. And so we brought two <laughs> options for our teas that we offer at our restaurant. Um, this one is our Tulsi turmeric chai. Both of our tea blends are sourced from a local tea maker called Purple Witch Teas. This is actually an herbal chai blend. So instead of having um, caffeine with black tea, that it adds a traditional chai spice to um, turmeric and uh, an herb called Tulsi, which is also mm. known as holy basil. It doesn't taste like your- Holy basil. Yes, that it okay. doesn't taste That's like- Okay, a new one for me today. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's an Indian herb. It's really sweet and mild. It doesn't taste like Italian basil at all. It's definitely worth trying. And then this one here is a special blend that's our s'mores tea, that this one is also an herbal blend. It, s'mores tea. Yes, it is using marshmallow root, Ooh. cacao nibs, honey bush, and some toasted fenugreek seeds for a nice rounded sweet flavor. Now they pair really well with all of our fall offerings. Um, this cookie here we call uh, Love at first spice. Mm. I like to lovingly call it our kicker doodle though, because it takes what would you would call like a traditional snickerdoodle type cookie and it just makes it extra special that when we make our dough, we actually have the dough and add um, gochujang chili paste into half of wow. it. We swirl it back together and then it's rolled in Chinese five spice. So it is a unique flavor riff on a yes. traditional cookie that you might be more familiar with. 
Um, and then here in the middle, we have our new fall muffin. They're the, beautiful. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so those are actually called marriage oats. Okay, and, marriage oats, okay. Yes, and they are approved from age nine months to 100 years of age, and we're not being hyperbolic saying that. So um, my grandmother is actually turning 100 this Wednesday. Oh, and thank you. Yes. And um, my my mother for for these has been obsessed, like watching on social media, because she's down in Florida, like wanting these. So I'm actually <laughs> hand delivering two dozen of these down to Florida. As for you should, As you should. Yes. for a centenarian. Yes. And then for the nine month old, <laughs> ja, uh, Thea has a nine month old at home who is our official taste tester, and she is apple obsessed. Love it. Mm. She loves her apple and cinnamon, and so she loves these muffins. They are an oatmeal, apple, and cinnamon muffin with an apple icing drizzle on top. Well, that so it has fabulous. beautiful. It's a really good uh, flavor combination for fall. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have some photos of her also for her, um, for today. But she, one of the photos that we have um, is her having the pastry cream uh, for one of the last times that we made a tart. And so we are bringing in this new fall tart today. Um, tart. Yeah, that one's the, the tart that. Um, oh, yeah, there's a lady. There she, is. Yay. she loves that ube pastry so cream cute. for that tart. And this is her uh, nine month photo from just a few weeks ago. Oh, very oh. cute. The last time that she had the pastry cream for our tart. Uh, she has not had a chance to try these tarts just yet. Um, but I know she's going to love them because they do have apples in them, which are one of her favorites. Um, so this one is a maple rosemary tart with a pomegranate, apple, cranberry curd. And today I'm actually going to show you how to make the whipped cream that goes on Let's top. Let's do this, yeah. Because I actually wanted to showcase just how easy it is to make whipped cream that you don't actually have to go into a grocery store and buy anything pre-made. So what I just put in the mixing bowl right now is some heavy whipping cream. Okay. This is a blend of powdered sugar and freeze-dried cranberry powder that's just gonna go right in. It's a really pretty color. And I do like to use um, just natural food color, um, yeah. like natural foods for food coloring, nothing artificial. This one here is a mix of vanilla paste and pomegranate juice, and that's gonna go in as well. And then the only thing that you're going to do is just you're gonna, going to whip that up, and then over time, it's just going to become a really nice whipped cream. And that's only gonna take a couple of minutes. And the really great thing about this is that it's, you can, you can customize it any way that you want. Okay. To make it any sort of flavor that you want instead of just your traditional, you know, whipped cream that you find in a can. And then with also the, um, the what was it with the vanilla, the pomegranate juice? It was is a that what that was? I mean, it's the yes. gorgeous colors that you can get. You can make it a customizable color just with right. some of those natural juices. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Especially with fall coming up and Thanksgiving then right around the corner, people would generally buy you know canned whipped cream at home with a bunch of yeah. preservatives and corn syrup, but you can just really easily whip something up like this at home and then it's fresh and no preservatives and things like that. It only takes a few minutes. And has a gorgeous presentation. Are there yes. any recommendations for the type of juice you would put in there? Um, you can really put in any kind of juice. The ratio usually is just one cup of heavy whipping cream to okay. about two tablespoons of powdered sugar. You can add more powdered sugar to it if you'd like. Um, and then just kind of having that ratio of the sugar to the liquid that you're adding so that it's not too loose. That was so fast. So it's so good. fast. It's literally just a couple of minutes and then you have whipped cream ready to go. Beautiful. So why buy something from a grocery store when you can just make it fresh at home? Mm -hmm. And I know that you were saying that it, it, we might have an opportunity to test our piping yes. skills. Yes. 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 For her there. <laughs> So this is it, this is ready. Wow, that was um, very fast. Super fast, and I've got a piping bag right here that I'm going to go ahead and just put this in, and then we'll go ahead and put your piping skills to the test. Okay. <laughs> who, wants to, who wants to put it to the test, Andreas, Amy? Maybe we can both do it. Oh yeah, Ooh, there we go. Do a comparison, see who does the best uh -huh. job. <laughs> we, we're making it competitive this morning. How about as that? As long as we have both have a chance to eat it, I think oh, yeah. we're okay. Oh, with most it. definitely. <laughs> oh yes. Now, if you don't have a piping bag at home and you're inspired, a ziploc right, bag. A ziploc bag, and then we just cut the tip. Cut the tip, yep. and that is a uh, a makeshift piping bag. I've done sure. that quite a few times because sometimes you know, but white but washing the piping bag is sometimes just an extra step when you're making it cookies is. with, with yeah. a toddler, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> which has been my experience yes. at home. So the Ziploc back works really, really well. Yes. And the I, nine month I like to have like a now, little, but <laughs> only for now. <laughs> I have a little scraper here to just kind of move that whipped cream down. Okay. Now remind us, the filling for the tarts here is? The filling for the tart is a pomegranate apple cranberry. Okay. okay. 
Mm -hmm. thing. All right. So walk me through like what a very, very um, good technique is with a piping bag. So technique, you just kind of want to make sure that the bag here is kind of rolled so that it's tight. Okay. That will give you good leverage for when you're actually piping. Okay. And then you just want to have kind of a stable hand and then you just kind of squeeze and then you kind of adjust the pressure um, to kind of determine what you want that piping design to be. Well, we want to make sure that we have enough time that we can both do yes. it. So right. I think we're going to take a quick break That's for right. the okay. moment. No worries. Yes. If you'd like more information on With Love, Kat and Thea, we'll post a link on our show website by early this afternoon at virginiathismorning.com. In the meantime, stay tuned. We'll be right back here doing this. Welcome back, everybody. We're in the kitchen with Kat and Thea and a piping bag that I'm going to, whoop. Ooh, there you go. There we go. It's actually pretty You're good, Amy. Right? I, this isn't my first rodeo, <laughs> but maybe my first rodeo on TV. <laughs> well, it's Doing not karaoke, this. right? Ooh. All right, let's oh, see, that, if I really can, see if I can keep it going. You had the perfect hold there. Let's see. It's like, oh. the, it's the pressure. And then it's yeah. just one after another. Okay, mine are, see, mine are not as perfect as Amy's here. Here yeah. we go. There we go. Well, you know, what, right. you know, if you problem, if you mess up, it's just extra whipped cream. And oh no, yeah. and oh no, oh, who doesn't no. like extra whipped cream? <laughs> and oh no. The beauty is you get to make this all your own. Yes. Whatever design, Ooh. whatever pattern. Okay, you like I need some more over here. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that you're mentioning more whipped cream, I it understand. Looks so pretty. It does. It looks so. Look pretty. at that. All right, now I have to taste it. We've got to okay, stay focused. Okay, let's do this. Here. Yes. Uh huh. We, we got you. All right, our fall in love tart. Fall in love. Cheers. First bite. Mmm. Perfection. And it love tastes it. even better because you helped make it. You sure do. <laughs> With love. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for coming in today. Of course. Bringing your magic into our studio today. And thanks to all of you for bringing your magic at home. That's right. And a big thank you to all of the guests who joined us on our show today. We hope to see you back tomorrow morning at 856. 856.